Hello. In this video, you'll learn about modifying the properties of a single node by direct editing. You can open the properties dialog of a node by double clicking it. And you can also edit nodes by double clicking the node structure on a profile. An alternative method is to select the node, then open the context menu with a right click and click InfraWizard Edit. Now let's talk about the properties of a node element. You'll first find the general properties like node name, network name, and type. Then we have the physical geometry panel. There are two types of node geometry currently available in InfraWizard, which are dummy and simple structure, but more types are expected to come in the future. The dummy node has no physical geometry. It means that this node is just a pipe connector, and this is the default type of nodes in pressure networks when you create or import new elements. If I open the BIM model of this network, you'll see the pipes connected with a dummy node appearing like this. Such node has no graphical representation on a profile as well. There's only a line to indicate the node location and point to the elevation data at this node. The simple structure type represents a manhole or a chamber. You can select its cross section to be circular or rectangular, then define its dimensions. For the circular section type, you can define the outer diameter and the bottom offset. The bottom offset is the height between the pipe invert and the outer bottom of the structure. It will appear on a longitudinal profile like this one here, and you can see what happens when I set it to zero. It also appears in the 3D BIM model of the network, just like these manholes. Going back to the node properties, let's check out the elevation geometry panel. The first part of this panel is about the ground level at the node. You can see that we have three options for the ground level source. The first one is a set value which was imported with the network or entered manually. The second and third options are the values picked from the primary and secondary surfaces assigned to the network. These options are only available if you're using InfraWizard on Autodesk Civil 3D. If you have Civil 3D surfaces in your project, you can assign a primary surface and a secondary surface to each network using the Manage Networks panel. As soon as you assign surfaces to a network, InfraWizard automatically picks the ground level at each node from these surfaces and stores it in the node properties. Now, if I open my node properties for editing, I can choose the primary surface option to tell InfraWizard that the ground level of this node should always refer to the primary surface of the network. If I move this node now, you'll notice that the ground level of it is updated with the surface level at the new position. In case I move the node accidentally outside the surface boundary, InfraWizard will automatically refer back to the set value of ground level. Next, we have the pipe matching property. This property tells InfraWizard if there's a certain relationship to be maintained between the pipes connected to this node. If I set it to none, this means that the invert levels of these pipes are completely independent. So changing the invert level of one of them does not affect the other one. This option is useful in gravity networks because in these networks we usually have drops in level at many manholes. But if we go to a pressure network, we'll find that the default setting is centerline matching because the connected pressure pipes should normally have the same center level even if they're of different diameters. Now, if I change the end invert of this pipe, then open the properties of the other one, you'll see that the start invert of it is updated to keep both pipes matched at the center. You can see this clearly on the longitudinal profile of this line. And because these pipes are matched at the node, you can control the pipe levels by changing the invert level at the node itself. Keep in mind that the node invert level represents the invert level of the lowest pipe connected to this node. 
So if I change the invert level of this node now, for example, lowering it by half a meter, you'll see that both pipes have followed the new level while keeping the same matching rule. Same thing would apply to a node connecting three or four pipes. We still have two more options for matching at the node, which are soffit level and invert level, so you can utilize them as appropriate for each case you may have. Finally, let me tell you that the depth property here denotes the vertical depth between the node ground level and the node invert level. It can be very useful to know the burial depth of pipes or the manhole heights in a gravity network. I think you've got a lot of information about the properties of pipes and nodes right now. It's time to make some practice on them so you can get more proficient with editing InfraWizard networks. In the next video, I'll show you how to use group edit tables to manipulate a set of pipes and nodes in batch editing operations, which will save you a lot of time. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.